What's up everybody? Welcome to the House of Mario, the award-winning Nintendo podcast backed by 120 Power Star rating. And the doors to episode 126 are open. I'm your host Drew Agnew and joining me as always is Bryce DeWitt. Whoa, it's me. Hey. Bryce, how are you going my friend? What's uh, going on? Yeah, on uh, the button or... Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. On the button. I don't know what you're on about. I don't know. There's plenty of them. I don't know. There's a lot of on buttons in this room. Oh, there is. Well, there's one on that Nintendo Switch. There's one on that Samsung phone. There's one on this computer. Actually, just thinking about the Nintendo Switch, uh, just quick. Oh, yeah, just quickly. Mine, mine got a crack. Oh. So, I mean, uh, most, I, th- I, I feel like if anybody checked... Mine's got the exact same one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> my, most consoles do. And then, like, the air vents are broken and all that stuff. Like, by this point, if you've had a Switch on launch day, this this thing has got damage on it. Like, no matter how delicately you, tr- like you treat this thing. But mine actually chipped this week yeah it's got an extra vent Is yeah right? it, well no not really because if you look at it closely because you, yeah. you haven't seen it you can actually see the chipboard and that makes me concerned yeah you can too yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> awkward yeah I mean I don't think it'll I don't think it still won't break anytime soon but I'm gonna probably have to have a look at a new one within uh, you know it's lifetime I guess yeah well you'll definitely need to uh <laughs> oh Jesus, Jesus. alright well that's it I'm not editing that out so <laughs> this week on the show we're we gonna might be... get a few of them just warning you anyway oh you cold ridden bastard yeah. uh, so this week on the show we're going to be talking about the Nindy event the game awards uh, the awards the announcements all that fun stuff um, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Xbox and what the next generation of consoles might mean for Nintendo in 2020 uh, but first Bryce I want to give a shout out to a friend of the show um, I've been meaning to do this probably for the last month um, I want to give a shout out to Nintendo Guru himself Bobby Bobby Pauls um, I've been listening to uh, if we ran Nintendo for since earlier this year, and I've been really enjoying the show, and through having Bobby on the show earlier this year, um, you know we've become uh, friends online and all that. And I was listening to if if we uh, if we ran Nintendo at work, and I put it on, and just straight away it was like a shout. It, it just started off with I want to give a shout out to Drag You, and I'm just like. You know, at work, and all of a sudden the podcast is talking to me. I'm like, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> it was just really nice. Um, he gave our show a listen on the way to the airport to pick up his dad, and um, he really enjoyed the show. And he gave us a shout out online. It was just, yeah. it's just really nice. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was very nice. Yeah, I've been meaning to put, say it, but we always uh, go off into a ramble, and I completely forget about it until halfway through the show. Yeah, I mean, hey, ha- have a look at the conversation we just had about my crack switch. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can that's see what it, happens. I can see it almost happening again. I'm, oh my god, god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. not again. Yeah, but thank you very much, Bobby and uh, Sean Capri over there. Um, really enjoy their stuff. So if if anyone's in the market for another Nintendo podcast, please go and check out if we ran Nintendo. Yeah, um, really sure. great show. They basically go through like um, a topic of the show and it's like if we ran Nintendo, what would we do better or what would we do differently? And it's interesting. Um, there was one episode when uh, the topic was what would we what would they do to fix Pokemon. And Bobby's idea was like, oh, I reckon just make a game with all the regions, all the Pokemon back in it. I'm like, yes, Bobby, you should run Nintendo. Why not? <laughs> That's it. It was like, a, it, was, it was quite funny to listen to. So definitely recommend that. So Bryce, let's jump into what we've been playing. Uh, this week for me, it's been a lot of Pokemon Go. I've been playing it with you as well. Yeah. We, yeah. we took our dogs for a walk for the first time. Went in there, caught some... Oh. Did you catch any shinies? You got a, You did. I got one shiny. Yeah. And then I played a little bit the following day. You had exceedingly more luck than I did. Mm. Yeah. So, rip yeah. me. So, I guess with the community day, basically there was... um, It was, uh, you know, the special December community day. So, instead of one day, it was the whole weekend. Or at least during the day on each day. And the shiny rates were up. And also, it was each Pokemon throughout the last two years of community events. Um, so... Why I was interested uh, interested in it, since they've now announced Pokemon Home, I'm like, tell you what, these shinies can actually be put into real Pokemon games now. It's okay. Whereas before, I was just like, ah, oh, you know, I'm not too fast about Pokemon Go, but now that I'm like, all right, these, thing, these can become like legit real Pokemon in an actual game. I'm like, oh, I actually care a little bit more. That's right. And uh, I'm not having much luck in Pokemon Sword at the moment. I'm still looking for a shiny Litwick. I'm up to, uh, at the moment of recording, 860 eggs, which is... I'm getting to the point now where it's like, all right, I want to do something else. I started The Outer Worlds, played that for about 40 minutes or so before I went to bed one night. I'm like, all right, yeah, I just needed something different. But I'm at the point now where I can't stop because if I stop now, you know, 
it's a waste of time. I'm, yeah. I'm defeated. It's yeah. a waste of time. So now I've got to get it. And yeah. I think at the end of the day, I will be happy with a shiny chandelier. But if I get over a thousand eggs, I'm going to be pretty grumpy. Yep. Um, but I think it is going to go that way by well, the seems of it. Yeah, yeah. So okay. the community uh, day, Bryce, and Pokemon Go, did you have fun with it? Getting, having like a good dive into the game again? I did, but it, it, it's given me a realisation of something about uh, the community days in as, as a whole. But mm. uh, I said to you on the day when we were walking around, <coughs> Jesus, I can't stop. Um, the rates that were on community day I really feel should just be the rates in Pokemon Go. At least coming from like a small town like perspective. We play up we we try to play Pokemon Go here outside of community day and you find fuck all. You find absolutely nothing. But community day was perfect. We were finding things all the time and it was wicked. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. So why like it it's I guess it's just irritating because we don't get those rates at all. Like, try and play Pokemon Go outside of a community day. Mm. I had a look today, which is the Monday after the, the weekend, and I I was still finding Turtwigs, so there are still some like, decent things out there, I noticed, when I was driving um just to the other end of town. Yeah, but not as many spawns and... No, yeah. Like, it feels more barren. Mm. It's like I go to a group of Pokestops, for example, it's like, oh, I found two Pokemon spawn there. It's like, oh. Mm. cool but on community day it's like you walk to one spawn and it was like 15 Pokemon shoved in your face it's like awesome <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. no it was it was a lot of fun and I went out the second day as well and like I took the dog for a walk and uh, you know, I was going around catching things and I was uh, at a playground and I saw like probably another 200 metres away there was someone taking on a gym so I'm like oh alright so I walked over there um, they just put in a Flareon and I took the Flareon down and th- th- there were two people just sitting in their car just like there was like two poker stops basically either end of the street and I just uh, I was on the corner with my dog just like tapping the screen and they must have it was pretty obvious I'm playing Pokemon Go so they said hey hey oh, I, <laughs> they were the ones who left the Pokemon in the gyms so they called me over and I said oh how you going are you local and whatever and I actually like had a bit of a conversation with them and they invited me to the, the apparently, apparently there's a new um, Facebook group for the, the local Pokemon Go community Right, and there's a Discord server and that. I'm like, oh, okay, so they invited me to that. I haven't, I haven't done anything in there yet, but yeah, there, there is a bit of a thriving community around it here. It's just a, uh, yeah, we need to sort of get. Bit I mean, more I know there is because I've seen, I've seen like the gyms changing and like all the people yeah, yeah. that are going in there and stuff. But it just, you know, that you have to have a lot of time <laughs> to mm. be dedicated to it here. Like you have to be the type of person that's not working very much or whatever it is because. For people like, say, you, who won't be able to get out and do much Pokemon Go in comparison to those same people, you'll never catch up to them. Because the spawns just do not mm. give that kind of yeah. flexibility. I mean, Pokemon Go, like, I'm I'm not too worried about the battling. I like the collecting. Yeah, me too. So I'm not too worried about catching up to level 40s or whatever. I don't really care too much about that. I just like... Yeah, I, I think I think um, each community day is going to be like an event on my, I guess hypothetical calendar and I'm like if I can make if I'm doing enough on that weekend I'll go out for a couple of hours with the dog or whatever and try and catch some things off because I did have I did have a lot of fun doing it and I see I see um, like Jamie Penning and like a few other people on Twitter and that were putting out like what their shinies were in that so it's a lot of fun in that aspect and what what did I end up getting I ended up getting a two tr- shiny Trico two shiny swine up uh, a, a mud kip and was that it slack off uh, yeah, and a, yeah, slack off, which I got to a... I, I did get to a slacking, and I got my mudkip to a swampert. I got uh, I got an Infernape, got got my Chimchar evolved. Um, yeah, I got a few things evolved. Um, yeah, I didn't quite get my Flygon. Flygon would have been nice. I see Jamie got a shiny Trapinch, which he got up to a Flygon. That's awesome. Nice. It's a very nice uh, shiny Flygon as well. Yeah, yeah. With the blue Definitely on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's our, that's our Pokemon Go adventures. Yeah. Um, you been playing anything else, Bros? Um, before I jump into mine. No, apart from apart from Pokemon Sword, I guess that's pretty much what I've been doing. Oh yeah, so I, you're yeah. So what are you doing in Pokemon Sword? So still. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just finding comfort in breeding, knowing that I can easily breed competitive shinies and stuff like that. So what I've been doing is I've actually been spending a lot of time in the subreddit Pokemon Trades. 
and I've been sort of just trading around like high IV stuff to sort of build up my collection of things that I can breed. And then from there, I've just been like sort of breeding on and off. But I come up with an idea a couple nights ago where I was just like, you know what? I feel like being nice on uh, on Christmas to just random folk. So what I'm going to do is um, I've just been breeding periodically two boxes of different Pokemon at a time. They've all got like decent natures, de- decent IVs, all that stuff. Mm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomize my boxes. I'm going to make maybe anywhere between four and five of them. And then I'm just going to put up in uh, put the Pokemon Trade subreddit and maybe Twitter as well. I'm going to say, hey, uh, I'm just giving away a bunch of Pokemon for Christmas. They're all, you know, good good for breeding or good for competitive use. Uh, you can mess around with them as you like, whatever it may be. Um, and just give to the people who don't have anything better to do this Christmas. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be awesome for say whether it's younger people or even if it's just like you know a 30 year old or whoever getting the game on christmas and that's right yeah yeah so if you don't have if you don't have a copy of pokemon sword and shield yet and you are getting a copy for christmas be sure to go on surprise trades because i know like a lot of uh big poker tubers like austin john plays and that are like really pushing to be like trading like good pokemon yeah under a certain link code yeah Mm. yeah like starters and all that stuff you know not even particularly just um just uh good Pokemon just like Pokemon that you'd be like oh that's cool I got that sort of thing yeah. like the starters or whatever it may be or yeah, something it's, later it's on like if you're at the start of the game and you get like a, a snow or something so oh you know that's that's something you don't get until like near the end yeah exactly yeah so I think basically what I want to do is I want to do that but I'm I'm sort of taking my competitive breedjex and then putting it on our Pokemon trades and just giving them away mm. um, I want to sort of do that so that there's more variety I guess going on because the thing is, is the smog on tier lists are finally starting to sort of shape up and finalise and hmm. all that stuff but I'm sort of just breeding as I go for different things nothing in particular just sort of look at a Pokemon and go is this what I need for it? yes okay well I'll do that then and then whether that actually does fit into a tier of any kind or whatever it may be uh, I put a giveaway up on, on the subreddit yesterday and I put it up for an hour, and um, all I was doing was uh, giving away my um, shelmet that I have ready, timid, 5 IV, no attack, so perfect for an Excel gore, mm-hmm. um, a minus attack, EV, uh, minus attack EVs with bold nature, so good for Sylveon, or uh, I suppose you could probably convert it into an Umbreon if you just change its... Uh, its would it be, I was thinking about this. Would it be all right for Vaporeon? Uh, maybe. Nature? Yeah. I feel like it would be because it's more of a bulky spe- special attacker. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So similar thing there, and then um, the other the other was five IV Dreepy with Adamant as well, and so I did I did that as a giveaway, and I got a, I got rid of a fair bit of them. Um, did you get anything decent in return? Uh, yeah. So I got sent back a Volpix and then, you know, uh, just some little stuff like that where I'm just like, yeah, you know what? That's probably a good idea. Hmm. Um, and then I've just got a, basically a whole mix of OTs in my boxes now. Um, I've got some free time on Christmas night once the kids are in bed. So what I'll do is I'll start then and I'll just see if I can get through the entire box, uh, the entire like four or five boxes I think I'm going to do. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm doing pretty well on the progress on them so far. So, mm. yeah. See, so, I uh, yeah, I, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon as well, but all it's been doing is hatching eggs. Yeah, constant eggs. I'm sick of it. I'm watching like competitive uh, Pokemon battles and that on YouTube. I'm like, I want to. I I just want to do this. <laughs> I want to actually get a team together. I'm sick of just looking for a freaking alternate color. But you know, I'm too deep now, bros. I'm too deep. It actually doesn't bother me too much because I'm sort of like, like I want to do the competitive battling and I want to do all that, but I just feel like at the moment I'm happy breeding. Mm. I guess is, there's no rush. Look, the game hasn't been out that long. No, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, it's, it's only the first, yeah. the only, only the first competitive tournament that's up for the month. And I mean, like, I could have had a team ready ages ago. I could have had Pokemon ready ages ago, and yeah. it's easy to get Pokemon ready like in a snap. But I was just kind of more invested in like, yeah, I could make some really cool Pokemon with this. Hmm. So I sort of I sort of been doing that. Yeah, because I know like uh, we talked about it at the start of the year where they had they have like the um I guess the po- what's it called the Pokemon Championship uh a uh, try not tryouts um 
Anyway, where like prelims? Tr- yeah, I guess the prelims where you try and get into like the Pokemon World Championship or the World Tournament or whatever it's called. Yeah. And I'm like, we should. I said to Bryce earlier, we should actually try and get up there, like maybe next year or whatever. Once Sword and Shield's out and we actually into competitive battling, don't know if it will happen yet. I don't. I don't even know if it's coming to Adelaide. I assume it is, but that's something I want to be a part of. I think that's last year. It was roughly in March, so if it's around a similar time, I want to be, because I, you know, I need to practice because I haven't really, I haven't done it since Gen Four. Yeah. So it's a little bit has changed since then. It's a lot of mind games too. Yeah. Like you've got to sort of have Pokemon set up for different situations and that's the main important thing. And yeah, that's it's just why like knowing, knowing what each Pokemon does and being able to predict what they might do. Whether they're swapping into a different type, you can nail them when they swap in. Or, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of... It's very, it's very interesting. And I mean, that's why Smogon's such a big community too because they design teams around like... Uh, what their capabilities are and they have the tier lists and all that stuff mm. but the thing is is they're, they're pretty much a skeleton um, when it comes to the VGCs because obviously the VGCs don't follow smog on tiers they just have their own ban yeah. list um, but most most people in the competitive scene sort of they they sort of stick to the skeleton of it and then build off of it on the rest and that's how you end up with that uh, like the follow me Pachirisu who just absolutely smothered the competition yeah, and that that follow me tactic seems pretty common now, doesn't it? Yeah, because he he turned it into a common tactic. Yeah, you know nobody ever thought of it. He thought of it one day, really decided he really liked Pachirisu, and he just worked with it. Mm. And you know that that sort of brought it back for people uh, who were aggressively following Smog on tears, and they were like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, <laughs> you know the the shit we can do. And like I've I've got that sort of those sort of analytics going on in my head as well these days when mm. like while I'm breeding I'm like yes. I could have this set up and so like I feel like I feel like it's pretty easy for example like Tyranitar who's like a, a, just an all out attacker it's easy to be like alright put an adamant nature on him make sure he's got like maybe sword stance boost his attack and all, then concentrate on maybe coverage for rock ground whatever whatever types you want to go for yeah. that's a little bit easier to set up but when you're like thinking about like a patch racer with follow me helping hand to be like a real good support that's when, like, you've got to, like, think a little bit more. Yeah, you do, yeah. Um, um, I feel like, anyway, in, in my case, that's just... Because, yeah, I could easily just chuck adamant and modest natures on everything <laughs> to make it attack and special attack. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's yeah. not always that sort of yeah. that sort of deal. And, I mean, um, there's a lot more complicated um, sweepers in this generation where it's sort of like... Uh, I, I suppose the best examples is stuff like uh, Hatterene and then you've got trappers like Earth. Uh, Ferrothorn, for example. Yeah. So, Hatterene and Ferrothorn are Pokemon that absolutely revel in having no speed whatsoever. So, your your aim and goal is to try and get them as low as possible, mm. and there's no way to decrease that. Yeah, so that that's a, that, that was a new thing to me. Like uh, watching Adra, I've like explained like, oh well, I want no IVs on speed because I want it as low as possible. It's like for oh, Trick Room, yeah. So yeah. So that's as fast as possible when trick rooms activated. Yeah. It's like yeah, it's like, oh. Yeah. That's there's, right. there's so many tactics. That's why um that's one of the reasons why, you know, I'm twenty five and still play Pokemon, because there's just this you can go through the story and it's just like, oh, it's a bit, that was a bit dumb, a bit weird. <laughs> but once you actually get to the end game, that's when it like it's really interesting. Yeah. With like raising these teams and getting to it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm. Um I guess I guess the thing is at the moment for me the biggest the biggest issue I have with myself is like uh, trying to find egg moves that are worth the time and then breeding them into the Pokemon. Hmm. Um, so I've been targeting Pokemon where that's not an absolute necessity um, to begin with because I'm I'm kind of just like I don't want to go through that effort right now. Yeah, and remember you can put egg moves on after the fact as well in this generation. Can you? Yeah. Well, in the in the trailer where they announced the mints and everything, what you can do is uh, you can just put two Pokemon in the daycare, then you can just pass them the an egg move. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I know that, yeah. Like, it, it's fairly simple to transfer, but it's just like, then I've got to go get the other Pokemon and then I've got to make sure it's got that move. And yeah, so yeah. It, it adds a whole other step to it where I'm just like, I don't really want to put in that much dedication just yet. Yeah. So, for example, um, I'm I, I I said to you earlier that I'm going to give you a gift today because I picked up something from Pokemon Trades and that was a Sparkling Aria Lapras. Um, to get to get that, it's an egg move. Um, but because there's nothing currently in the game that you can use to 
get sparkling aria because the only pokemon that can have it is uh primarina which is in the game's code and will presumably be able to be transferred into sword and shield mm. um when pokemon home comes available when, yeah when pokemon home comes available but because it's the only pokemon that can learn sparkling aria through normal level up with lapras the only way to get it is by getting it from a brilliant aura pokemon or a uh, max raid mm. and it's like a one percent chance <laughs> Like, shit like that, I'm just like, no. <laughs> I don't want to put in that much effort, you know? That 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 could take literally forever. So, uh, on Pokemon Trades, there was a guy just giving them away. Um, nice young man. Who managed to get a hold of one and buy whatever whatever, whatever method. And it was um, sort of like, well, yeah, I'll just take one of them. Thank you very much for the gift. And then I'll <laughs> breed them. And then they said the only condition is that you breed them and pass them around. So that Okay, so you didn't have to give him anything good. No. Nah. All right. Just breed them and pass them around because it's a rarity in this game and a lot of people are like, oh, it's hacked, it's hacked. But it's like, well, no, it's not. Um, every every egg move can be learned by uh, learnt through Brilliant Aura Pokemon. Mm. It just depends on your luck. And every egg move has a different um, percent chance of actually obtaining it. So the only way to get it is through Brilliant, Brilliant Aura or G-Max Raids and it's a 1% chance. It's probably the rarest egg move in the game. So well, I'm excited to have it. Lapras is uh, one of my top five favorite Pokemon. Yeah. Um. So it will be good to use. I reckon I'll use that in my party. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's uh, let's move on for Pokemon, just so we don't bore uh people out there, yeah. like Luke and I don't know else other people don't play Pokemon. Um. So just the last game I've been playing a little bit, put maybe two hours or something into it one night was Dauntless when it came out. Um. I've been waiting for Dauntless to come to Switch for a while. And uh, I sort of been wanting. I've been wanting to play Monster Hunter for a while, but at the same time, I wanted it on a handheld because that's where like I just, I, you know, do a lot of grinding and stuff. Yeah. Might be a bit more easy. And Dauntless being that a little bit of a less of a entry level to get into and being cross play across everything. Um, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll give it a go on Switch. So I download it for free, and uh, yeah, been really. It's, it's been a little bit to learn because I haven't um, played Monster Hunter before, so. Um, yeah, so I jump into it and yeah, it's, I'm having quite a lot of fun with it. I chose uh, the, the weapon I chose to start off with was just the uh, sword, um, pretty basic. Um, when when I took down some enemies and it takes a, it took me a fair while because it didn't actually party me up with anyone, so I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> it, took, it took like I think eight minutes to take down a monster. I got an S rank. I'm like, you sure? That felt like a long time. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. I think they're just trying to make me feel good so I keep playing. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> you, I don't, you haven't played Monster Hunter if you think that's that's uh, slow. Yeah. It's, it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're first seeing something that's like above your pay grade and like you're like, yeah, it's something you actively need to hunt uh, mm. to try and push forward and get further on in the game, you could be spending. 15 minutes on one monster and you could be doing it multiple times just to yeah. get the shit you I don't, I don't think like the 8 minutes was long it just felt long because I was you know hard. I didn't have that many many abilities yet and I didn't really know what I was doing at the same time so I was just like hit 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 and just 8 minutes of like ugh, ugh. It feels like a long time so I, yeah I, I know that Monster Hunter um, battles take a lot longer yeah. especially like the more difficult ones but yeah really really enjoying it on Switch um the frame rate does bug me a bit. Just, it's kind of like it's not steady, and it's not that good either. So it is noticeable to me. Yeah. Um. Hopefully they lock it down in future updates or whatever. I think what they're doing, I don't know if if they've done it yet, but what's basically happening is they're um getting a bit more power out of the Switch by um having access to the bit of RAM that Nintendo sort of holds off for the operating system. And they're getting access to that, so hopefully that will be used just to steady out the frame rate. Yeah, because like a game like that where it's high action, um, it needs to be at a you know decent frame rate so you can actually time your attacks and everything. Yeah, especially like when like you're waiting for an animation and like all right, this is my chance. Then the frame rate goes. Oh, so like, oh no, this is yeah. Yeah, but yeah, um, this is not my chance. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. So I kind of feel like this is a game I'd. If I want to be playing on the TV or something, I'll be playing on something other than Switch. But when I go to bed, I swap it over to the Switch. It yeah. Feels like that type of situation. But yeah, it's definitely worth um, worth having a go. I reckon. Uh, so if anyone wants to play with me, 
Please play with me. I need a party. <laughs> I haven't started yet. Yeah. Um. I, I want. I want to give it a go, but I don't want to. Want to start just yet? Wait until after Christmas, mm. because um, I, I'm when Monster Hunter World come out, I sunk so many hours into it, and I'm sure I'll sink more uh, into Iceborne next year when it comes out for PC. But it's sort of like, you know, like when I when I get to something like that, I just want to put in the effort. And yeah. uh, I can't really do that this week or next week or, you know, during Christmas time in general. I'll have to wait until after New Year's. Yeah. 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 yeah you got to be catching all those Pokemon so you don't have enough time. Well, <laughs> no. It When I get stuck into a play session, I'll get stuck into it for like six to eight hours. It's not... Yeah. It's it's not like Pokemon where I can just like, all right, I'm done hatching eggs for now and click. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I want to. I want to sort of push forward and get further. And mm. yeah, I do like how it like gradually like teaches you though. Like you do, you go up to a person and he, he tells you how to like you know craft your um, weapons and how to upgrade them. When you go into a a battle and it's sort of like those weapons you crafted were the ones that are strong against that particular um, beast you're taking on. Yeah. When you come out, then it's like, all right now go to the armor guy. He will explain how to do armor and um, the armor you craft will be. Um, strong against the the beast you take on it keeps on just like staggers it along like that so I kind of like that because otherwise I'll sort of go into the hub area and be like we're up what where, am I doing yeah <laughs> where am I going this is uh, this is odd yeah yeah so Bryce that's enough about what we've been playing um, sweet <laughs> sweet you're sick of hearing me talk <laughs> uh, so I want to talk a bit, a little bit about the sort of the, the indie stream the other day I don't want to talk about it too much I don't want to go through all the games and everything but um, you said earlier you, you weren't really interested in it. You don't have anything to say, really. No, yeah. Nah. I sort of, I sort of took a look look at the games in question because I, I don't I don't aim to be watching that live. Yeah, I didn't watch it live either. I watched it um, in the morning um, still, but I just watched it on YouTube afterwards. Yeah. Um, so the biggest thing from that for me was Dauntless when that came out. Like, oh, here's the trailer for Dauntless, and it said you know available now. I'm like, yes. So that was probably the biggest thing for me just because I've been waiting for that game for a while to jump into it. Um, but sort of the the second biggest thing would be probably a sports story um, coming next year to Switch. So it's a sequel to Golf Story, but now it's evolving like all types of different sports. Right. Where it's volleyball, soccer, um, obviously golf still. There's heaps in there, but they sort of like shown the trailer how that, you know, you're on a tennis court and you're kicking a soccer ball and then someone's hitting it with a golf club back to you. Like, they're sort of, like, mixing it all together. Interesting. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so I haven't actually played Golf Story. I bought it when it was half half price on a sale, probably middle of this year. I right. bought it I bought it just because, ah, oh, it's cheap. Um, you know, Australian developer. It's a game I need to play. Um, so I bought it and I just haven't, haven't gotten to it. So I'm not, like, absolutely aching for a sports story because I haven't played Golf Story. Yeah. But hopefully, like from what I've heard, like a lot of people play about halfway through Golf Story. And go, all right, I've sort of had enough. <laughs> then just don't finish it. Yep. I hope a uh, sort of sports story sort of improved. doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Sort of pushes on and aims to be better. Yeah, because like with why I haven't played Golf Story is mainly because I like I like all the writing and everything that I've seen, but I don't really want to play that golf. <laughs> sort of gameplay it's not um, yeah. I never really got into Mario Golf or any sort of golf game really do you like actual golf though? no really? no I like actual golf do you? yeah it's relaxing yeah yeah I mean I don't I don't dislike it but stress therapy just smash the ball and then walk around a course it's a good means to spend a couple of hours out the house and just do something yeah no I get that yeah yeah it's like the only reason I like golf. <laughs> but yeah. How often do you go golfing? You never go golfing? No, uh, not not these days. Clubs are too expensive, man. They're like the most expensive <laughs> thing to buy on the market when it yeah. comes to sports. It's like, here, buy this club set for one thousand eight hundred dollars. I'm like, no, thank yeah. you. <laughs> when when my grandma moved out of her beach house, um, because down down at Beachport there was um there's a golf course there, and she had this uh little pink golf <laughs> buggy. <laughs> A golf bag with like all the clubs in it and they just they gave it to they gave it to us so I've got no idea what that is I don't know if we've even still got it but could you imagine me getting around with like a little pink little cart with my little my grandma's clubs oh fuck like, yeah 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 yeah. that's why we need to go golfing <laughs> I mean you can just get like a second hand you don't have to get the best clubs 
No, you don't. But second hand, with with the with the asking price of golf clubs being like, I bet you can find some real cheap. Oh no, <laughs> I bet you can. Not not anything where you're like, oh yeah, I'll just pick up that set of golf clubs. It's like five hundred dollars at the bare minimum, and they they'd probably be like rusted and fucking terrible <laughs> nah I, I think I think you're looking at too high a market my friend I absolutely am not you look at anywhere around here I can guarantee you actually I remember, what, I remember what I did with that golf <laughs> I got the driver I took it I took all the balls out to the farm set up a tee I think I just sort of smacked all the balls and I never never went and got them I just like put them in the paddock and just smacked them as hard as I could <laughs> good job thanks man <laughs> yeah so I can't I'm trying to actually find I actually forgot to bring up a list of all the games and I can't even find one. So, thanks, Vooks. <laughs> thanks, Vooks. Yeah, we use them for everything else, but this one time... Yeah. God damn it. And my Nintendo news. i tell you what. Um, yeah, like, I've listened to a, like a, a fair few other, like, you know, gaming podcasts and all that sort of discuss it all, but I think they're the two games that, like, stood out to me the most. And there's, like, there's stuff like Skatebird and there's some pretty cool games in there, but I don't feel like... I've got like anything more to say about them than like yeah what a what um you you would probably think when you watch them it's like oh yeah that looks good. It's the thing there's so many indies on the Switch at the moment that I still have to play. Yeah, there's heaps. That's mm. why that's why I'm particularly not interested in more indies mm. at the moment. I'm sure they're great games and I'm sure there'll be a reason to buy them down the line. But right now I'm just kind of like no, nah, I don't really need to know. I'll just look at them later <laughs> and I'll hear about the good ones like you know untitled goose game or something that just gets absolute renown and then I'll just go from there hmm. know what I'm saying I know exactly what you're saying there you go alright bros let's move on to the next so thing it gets you talking that's why I say it yeah well it just gets, it gets me real <laughs> gabbering on doesn't it <laughs> um, so the next uh, little bit of news is that Pokemon Sword and Shield has achieved the highest launch month sales in any Pokemon release in US history so this is from the MPD group over in the US, obviously. Um, the monthly, monthly MPD sales report has uh, been released and it's included some major news for Nintendo's newest release, Pokemon Sword and Shield. According to NPD analyst Matt Pescatella, Pokemon Sword and Shield titles combined to achieve the highest <laughs> launch month dollar sales for any Pokemon release in the US, topping the previous launch month set high by Pokemon Sun and Moon. Pescatella a tweet is down below so Matt Pescatella um, yeah he just yeah don't have to read that no um, so yeah um, I I kind of expect these games to sort of be the most um, profitable just for the fact that they're charging an extra 20 bucks on top of what yeah. Sword and Shield were yeah so the you amount Sun and Moon yeah, yeah the amount of um, extra copies of Sun and Moon on top of what Sword and Shield to achieve the sort of the same um, profit would have to be probably a fair bit yeah yeah so yeah and it's no surprise either that, that like in the first week or three days or whatever it was that Sword and Shield sold 6 million like we know this game's going very well Game Freak can keep their lights on the Pokemon company can keep trucking along do you have that that other story there I don't have it no no so the other interesting thing is that um, Creatures Inc has, uh, Creatures Inc has been scrubbed from like a yeah. lot of the official material yeah so I can't comment on this because I didn't read the article or do any research on it so well basically all, all, all it is is that um, on the on the web pages specifically um, like official com sort of stuff Creatures Inc has been scrubbed from the um, so that's Pokemon.com I'll check Pokemon.com I think now, it's then. Pokemon.com it was definitely an official source of some kind and I know that Creatures Inc there was three companies three companies that are specifically labelled and Creatures Inc has been scrubbed from mm. it yeah so like yeah, like I said I haven't done any research on it I don't want to be putting false information out there but just some based on what that article was and what you're saying um, that could have a lot to do about you know what's happened with Sword and Shield it could be and being that Creatures Inc are responsible for the models and sort of the all that that could have been a large reason of why they couldn't fit them in Sword and Shield yeah um, but yeah yeah anyway it's going to take uh, a little if I got it down Sword and Shield anyway let that load we'll go to the bottom of the page it's only got it's only got Pokemon it doesn't actually have a yeah we'll, we'll we'll look into it for a future episode anyway because it could be um could be a big reason because <laughs> it's be. 
yeah, because obviously they've been around for ages and they make their, you know, they've been known to make spin off games and everything. So, yeah. So, Bryce, um, the Game Awards. You've been keeping up with the Game Awards, Bryce? Did you watch these? <laughs> You watch these, Bryce. You gotta, you gotta keep up to date on some of these things, surely. Oh, yeah, for sure, mate. Yeah. For sure, mate. So, um, I guess just before we jump into sort of, uh, um, what category is Nintendo won? I found it. Hang on. Oh, you've got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Pokemon developer Game Freak has removed Creatures Inc. from the list of partner companies on its website, as spotted by Japanese site um, Pokemon Matome Creatures Inc. Uh, which co-owns Pokemon franchise was listed as a main client on Game Freak's company profile as recently as November 18th but now has been removed Creatures Inc. has been involved in the Pokemon franchise since the beginning but only recently partnered with Game Freak once the game series entered the 3D space with 2013's X and Y both ga- uh, Game Freak and Creatures Inc. own the Pokemon franchise Franchise, Ugh, Jesus, can't talk alongside Nintendo it's unclear if the removal has been made in error or if there has been a, a genuine change in the relationship between Game Freak and Creatures Inc. VGC has contacted the Pokemon Company for clarification. Uh, so, yeah, we already know that Creatures Inc. is the uh, people who do the models and all that stuff. Uh, that was from VideoGamesChronicle.com. So, basically, uh, from, yeah, so it was from the uh, official website managed by Game Freak. It's been removed from the partners list. Um, but they don't know whether it was by, by an accident or uh, if it was intentional. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, I haven't seen any other news stating otherwise, uh, whether mm. it was on purpose. Yeah, because I can't say I remember them in the Sword and Shield credits either. No. I mean, there's a lot of names. It's easy to forget, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they would have to be in there somewhere because it's obvious they made some of the assets for this game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but whether whether that means whether that means something completely different for the future of Pokemon is curious. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be something to keep an eye on. I think. Yeah. Just with uh with the direction Pokemon's going in, and this could be a very real reason of um why things have happened the way they have. Yeah. So anyway, that's the information we got now. Because you sent it to me the other day, and I went, "Huh, it's starting to make a little bit of sense." While they just come out and go, "All right, we can't do it because the company that does it um, isn't, you know, working with us anymore." Yeah. So that yeah. makes a bit more sense. Yeah, that would. Yeah. Yeah, and even with all sort of the the internet outrage, uh, you know, Masuda and Omori can't be like, "All right, yeah, and that creatures come back." <laughs> so yeah, be interesting to keep a keep an eye on, especially in the lead up to probably what will probably be another Pokemon game next year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Anyway, VGA's Nintendo won awards. Yes, they did. Um, congratulations, Nintendo. Um, pat on the back. So what did you think of the event as a whole? Just re- regardless of Nintendo or whatever, did you enjoy the sort of the watching the awards, the announcements, all that type of thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. I, I've got two good announcements out of it that were like, you know, uh, which by the way, I don't know who won our bet, but... <laughs> Um, what was our bet? I can't remember. We we had the three things. It was like, probably will happen, might happen, and then definitely won't happen, but it'd be funny if it did. Mm. And it was over a pizza. I can't remember what our things were, though, so I'm not going to worry. Oh, definitely none of mine got done. I don't think any... I don't think any of ours got done because um, well, not, not much stuff happened. Mine was... Yours was a Smash character, and mine was an antici- was an anticipated game and I think that's probably the only one I got right um, with No More Heroes 3 and Bravely Default 2 being announced there or well No More Heroes 3 was sort of elaborated on and then Bravely Default 2 come up hmm. um, so I don't know uh, oh, no I can't remember what I said to be honest no but you have to go back and look everybody tweeted us who won the pizza because yeah. I can't remember but at the same time like yes those games are anticipated especially no more heroes because we actually know that the it, the third one that was trailer coming. was really cool too. it was really cool we'll talk yeah. we'll talk about it yeah. but at the same like i know they're on switch the splash screen was there but i i don't really count it as you know a nintendo game a eh? whatever it depends how we worded it well i <laughs> i talked about bayonetta when it comes to anticipated game that is not nintendo it's published by nintendo though it's, it's published by nintendo i don't know heroes might be too i don't know i yeah. can't remember yeah well, there you go yeah. brave default might even be too 
Yeah, because um, Square Enix o- Octopath, Octo- Octopath Traveler was um, published by Nintendo. Was it? Yeah. So. so- Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it, it's a bit weird. I don't know the wording we used. Logistics. But, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's go through um, a few of the winners. Uh, we won't go through them all, obviously, because a lot of them aren't relevant to our little show here. Yeah, that's right. But let's talk about some of the ones Nintendo was involved in. So strategy game, uh, Fire, Fire Emblem Three Houses won. Uh, I didn't actually see that award. Thank God. Okay. So yeah, that, that is one that I missed. I missed a couple of things at the Game Awards because I was listening to it on the move. But I'm glad that won the award. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I didn't catch it. <laughs> so yes, that's uh, that's good for Fire Emblem. Oh, go Fire Emblem. It's good that it won something because it's been a uh, it's been, uh, it's been one of the the games I've seen make the biggest splash this year from yeah. my perspective anyway. Yeah, um, for sure. Living in Switchland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what we got here? Just going through all of the things. Multiplayer. So games for impact, uh, Gris one, Gree, Gree, whatever. Um, so yes, that that was worth it. Uh, fighting game, uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate one. Never would have guessed. Mm. Its competition didn't really have much of a chance. Yeah, so there was Mortal. I reckon probably the one that was actually fighting this one was Mortal Kombat Eleven. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, that also has less of a target audience. So yeah. it's sort of yeah. Don't really fit the bill one hundred percent as mm. as it may be. Yeah, no, it's it's really good to see Smash come away with something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. like it, it deserves it. I think like you know Mortal Kombat Eleven would have deserved it too. But here we are. Um, so family game or Nintendo game. <laughs> uh, so Luigi's Mansion beat the rest, which is I'm happy to see that out of these ones. Like, um, I th- I think like Smash is. I guess the best game out of these ones or the biggest game or whatever but Luigi's Mansion is better than I think look like Super Mario Maker Yoshi's Craft the World Ring Fit Adventure so I'm happy to see it there yeah yeah yeah. and it's a, it's a, a little bit of a win as well for next level games which uh, their last game was um, what was that Metroid game on 3DS Samus Returns no not Samus Returns uh, what was it oh um Force, Force, Force. Oh, Federation Force. Federation Force, yeah. So that was their last game. So they needed a bit of a win <laughs> from that, I think. I mean, just give me Strikers, Strikers Charge. Yeah. But that'd... remastered and done all nice. And in, in like the graphics of like Luigi's Mansion 3, imagine that. Mm. I'd rather just a new Strikers with some different things. But yeah, but just imagine the graphics. Imagine the graphics. Of, wow. of like the Luigi's Mansion 3 level tier graphics in a Strikers game. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah, be cool. I want that game again. Bring it back. Yeah. Do fuck it. it. Fuck. It won't, <laughs> won't even fucking need FIFA on the platform. Then there you go. We could stop complaining about FIFA from EA. We we'll just play Mario Strikers. Yeah, we don't need FIFA anyway. Nah, no way. No way. No how. Um, and yeah, uh, yeah. So in game of the year went to Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice, which uh, it beat it, Smash Bros. Yeah, which beat Smash Bros. in this tier, which is uh, which is which is fair enough. I feel like. I, I knew I knew that was going to happen. I even said it last week yeah. um, that it it would probably be up against Smash and Sekiro. I'd I'd like to see the pie chart of the votes. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I feel like I feel like it'd be relatively close. I feel like sh- the thing is with Sekiro is it's what PlayStation Four and PC exclusives. Mm. So it's sort of just like I w- I would love to see where um, the line sort of sits because I know that. Even though it's on PC, it wouldn't have got a hell of a lot of players there. Not in comparison to PS4. And even then, it's sort of like... The niche that that game sort of fits into is pretty small. It's those games that like... Bulls-ass hard (laughs) video games. Bulls-ass hard. Bulls-ass hard video games. You know, I couldn't think of a phrase for that. But anyway... For real gamers. (laughs) Epic gamers, yes. That's why I don't. That's why I haven't played it. I'm not a real gamer. But like that, and then um, like Smash Bros. Reach, of like, um, yeah, fifteen million plus. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it'd be it'd be interesting to see like what the what the sort of pie chart is on that and um where that sort of sits because I know that a lot of people that you know have those have a hand in those fifteen million units probably don't care as much as about the game awards as what. Um, mm. anyone else does but I don't think S- S- Sekiro wouldn't have sold nowhere near as many copies 
Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's I like, mean, it's a game I've been meaning to play because I know it's a beautiful game, but I just haven't got around to it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, congratulations to Sekiro. Yeah, absolutely. I feel, yeah. I feel like it's, it's only a, only more incentive to play it now. Yeah, it's a big win for not from Soft because like a lot of a lot of the games they make, a lot of uh, they, yeah. they they get ignored by the the mainstream because oh, they're too hard and like you know they don't sort of pick up some of these or they don't get the recognition they yep. sort of deserve. Yep. So I think they've finally got it. So it's it's well done for them. Well, considering they made what you had Dark Souls 1 to 3 then Bloodborne then Sekiro it took 5 games for them to get a game of the year mm. but the thing is, is all 5 of those games are pretty stellar and have always been re- well received yeah so it's uh, good that he, the good good that they finally got it mm. they, they deserve that you know they've been smashing it for years they've been doing really well so good yeah. on them yeah like you know Nintendo's they've, they've got enough bloody advertisement money in that to do it anyway not that uh, Activision who publishes <laughs> Sekiro does no other but <laughs> yeah, but Activision and Activision, we don't need to worry about them too much. Nah, don't have to worry about them. I know, that, I know that COD. I think COD actually won two or three awards. Yeah, COD Mobile. Um, COD Mobile picked up um, best mobile game. Yep, and uh, which is good actually because that game is actually fucking yeah. good. And uh, um, Modern Warfare got best so, audio design. Yes, it did, yeah. and I appreciate that because that was the one thing when I was at PAX, I put my headset on, I was just like, oh my god, hmm. this is really good sound design. Holy shit! Yeah. yeah. So, reg- regardless of um, Nintendo or whatever, uh, what were some any categories stand out to you that you went, oh well, congratulations, that's a good fit, or the some have you scratching your head? Um, I know you don't have the list in front of you, but do, do you sort of remember as you're listening? Um, no, I don't think particularly because again, I was on the move and so I missed some of them. Uh, but i think the thing that annoyed me most is disco elysium picking up literally like every single indie award mm. i think that was the one thing i was miffed at i was just like jesus christ why like i had not heard heard about disco elysium talked at all talked about at all like by anyone mm. i know i had neither but i've heard some great things about it and obviously um it's picked up four awards and it was nominated in four categories so uh, <laughs> it's um it basically it basically won the game awards it won the most awards at the show so uh yeah i haven't played it myself that's but. still strange to me though like I've, because I've, well the, the reason for example you wouldn't have heard about that game because it's a indie game on steam it didn't have any advertising or anything but stuff like untitled goose game gris all that they'll they'll partnered with nintendo for advertising for nintendo directs like all of those games we saw them in indie directs and everything so that's why you've yep. heard about them but that aside I'm talking about the social media. Like, I didn't hear... I, Untitled Goose Game was, like, the massive fucking meme to, like, everybody. Everybody knows what that fucking yeah. goose but is. But it, it being a big meme doesn't necessarily mean it should win the award either. Well... Over over a game that's this, clearly pretty good. Yeah, but then you're saying Goose Game isn't good either. But that's exactly the reason why it's got world-renowned, is it's a good indie game. So, I, I don't it's, know. It's, it was mainly, like, the character and the marketing for Goose Game, though. I'm, I'm just being devil's advocate here, bros. I, I know, you've been fucking de- devil's advocate, but what I'm saying is that, like, I don't know where the fuck this game's come from, and it confuses me even more that it's won, like, four awards. Does that Just because you haven't heard of it, though, does that mean it shouldn't have won any awards? I'm not saying that. What are you saying, then? What I'm saying is that just... What was it, on Steam? Yeah. That was it? It's on, it's on PC, yeah. It's on PC. It's on Steam. It's on nothing else? I don't think so. I haven't played it. I don't... It doesn't sound like my type of game. Then that still confuses me even so. more. <laughs> Untitled Goose Game is free on Xbox. It's on the Epic Games Store. And it's on the Switch. Yeah, it's coming to PS4 too. And it's coming to PS4. That's mm. four platforms. So how did one game on Steam all of a sudden take four awards? Because it's a good game. Okay. But how? <laughs> because the developers... That's still fucking confusing. Developers made a good game. I'm sure they did, but so did all the. So did a lot of the indie nom- nominees too. More people voted for that. Who the fuck was voting for the indies then? <laughs> Only Steam users. Uh, That's why I'm confused. I can't. I didn't even vote. To well, be honest. What the fuck do you? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I voted. Oh, good on you. Well, you don't get fined for not voting in this one, so it's alright. It's like it's like the literally the only game indie game that I hadn't heard of. I'd heard, I've heard a concrete genie, all the things that the explosion network said about that, you know, the good things. And then, um, obviously, Goose Game. There was Cadence of Hyrule up for the soundtrack, which was brilliant. I thought it was like, yes, 
didn't get that either um and then what was it out of wilds heard about that because there was people chirping on about it earlier on in the year yeah and saying oh this is awesome but i didn't literally not heard of disco elysium or anything around it I, I, like i said i had neither yeah well there you go so but you- it was a obviously the judges had played it they put it up for nomination and but my point is like i'm I, not saying they don't deserve the award i'm just kind of miffed at one four when there were so many good <laughs> indie games this year there was a lot of good indie games hmm. i don't believe that a game that's exclusive to steam would have taken out all four just single-handedly yeah, i'll tell you what after the show i'll get your jeff jeff Kelly's email address that's right send it to him saying disco elysium did not deserve four awards <laughs> <laughs> only because i haven't played it but <laughs> Yeah, exactly. My, I don't my know. point. My, I don't know. What, I don't know what we're arguing over here. Well, no, I'm just. You might play it. You might go. Oh fuck! It's a good game. <sighs> you know what? I might. But at the same time, it's just really confusing. Like that it took out four awards when there was so much more hype around more games in that in the indie scene this year. There was a lot of hype. Hmm. Yeah. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, let, let's move on Bryce let's talk about some of the announcements that are coming to Switch none from Nintendo themselves uh, but um, basically one of the first trailers was uh, DLC um, for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 so we're getting X-Men characters you can have fun with that yeah yeah. I'm not going to talk about it I don't really care because um, <laughs> uh, personally um, Ultimate Alliance 3 was a game I bought but I think it came at like pretty similar time to Fire Emblem so I'm just like eh. I never actually... I didn't even boot it up. It's one of those... Ga- like, I will play it eventually. Probably when the next Spider-Man or some movie comes out. I'm like, yeah, Marvel. I'm like, oh, I've got it on my Switch. I'll play it. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not I'm not like... I definitely am not the type of person that's like, oh, these X-Men I've never heard of. Because I'm not... I never got into X-Men either. I like the X-Men. Yeah. I, I, because it was on like the opposite side, it was a movie I didn't need to sort of catch up on for the MCU. So I never actually watched them. But yeah. Anyway, and... um. I guess the the next one, which is one of the biggest ones, which we talked a little bit about, was the uh, the uh, No More Heroes three um, trailer. That was a dope trailer. Yeah, and sort of when, when it did like the switch icon, I'm like, all right, this is something I need to pay attention to. And I'm like watching it, and it's I'm like, like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's like, what the hell? It's, yeah, it looked like you know it had like the just the, the square image, like when you're watching on the old tube TV back when you were a kid, and I'm like, what is this Digimon or something? I thought it was like a Digimon trailer. It's like sort of how it was like in the city with like the Digimon like or whatever like getting beamed up. It's just Digimon. Then it sort of like you know does its thing and th- like the superheroes come like come down. Like what the hell? Did Digivolve or what? But no, it's uh, it was No More Heroes three. Yeah. When you see Travis, I'm like, huh? I'm like, oh, cool. So yeah. yeah. Now I'm gonna have to go play No More Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm keen for this, and I've been sort of like listening to some like chatter about like you know what this game is. And apparently, in um what was the indie game called um, the No More Heroes so Travis Strikes Again yeah yeah. Travis Strikes Again apparently what that apparently the story of that is sort of based on a d- d- um, the d- director of the game was making a game with EA and EA wanted to change a few a fair few things about what was going on there and like you know what we've seen with EA in the past one, one of the biggest sort of influences on that is was like Fuse back with Insomniac they made that game for some like a whimsical shooter into like a basically like a just a real gritty shooter and it made the game awful yeah. so they're, they're doing a similar thing um, with that and the game's basically about like EA and him like how he got fucked over by him so I don't really know because I haven't played the game but I was just listening to him that sounds really interesting so I'm, I'm keen to sort of figure out go and learn about the story there even before I play this game yeah mm. I don't think it's necessary to enjoy it um because Travis Strikes Again is kind of an offshoot. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it is definitely an offshoot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I'm interested to play that game just to see what it's about, but uh, is asking price, I think, was 50 bucks in it at the time. I was like, nah. It was about 40, yeah. yeah. Australian, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't be bothered with yeah, that. Yeah, because I, I enjoyed the other two. I played them. Um, I never played the other two. I played them one on two on Wii. I got them both secondhand years after. <laughs> And like the heart, like I couldn't go back to them now because it's like you know just shaking the Wii mode and there's like you know you use the speaker as a telephone and like you know it's got every little gimmick in there possible. But yeah, uh, looking forward to the third one. Um, 
I'll yeah. just have to watch a catch up thing. Yeah, to I sort of I'll... get myself caught up on the story. Yeah, I will too. Because yeah, I've pretty. I remember playing it with Dan, and we're just like looking at it, like wagging our remotes, kind of scratching our head of like what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and the next one, um, Braver Default Two. Oh, he's looking forward to it. Oh, baby. So I, I didn't play a whole lot of the first one. I didn't play any of the second one. I I said it I said it back uh, before Octopath Traveler came out on this podcast. I'm pretty sure. And even then, um, I think even post uh, uh, post Octopath Traveler came out. Bravely Default uh, was the best RPG to come out of Square Enix's hands in a very 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 long time. Mm-hmm. And I think even post Octopath Traveler, I still think I preferred bravely default okay um so the thing that really captured me with bravely default in the first place i guess was that it it reminded me a lot of the remakes of final fantasy 3 and 4 that they did for the ds yeah very similar in that regard um but the job system was really interesting they had like a lot of side quests uh floating around the job crystals and stuff like that which sort of made it more engaging and made you sort of like pick your path for your characters in a sense you could like go off and do this side quest for the extra extra jobs or you could just leave it and just stick with like really tandem classes that you you know will sort of just be old faithful um and bravely default was really good in that regard it sort of lended its way all the way to the end i picked up bravely second and for whatever reason i couldn't keep playing it i don't know what it is didn't click with you it didn't click, but not for the not for the wrong reasons. I think just at the time, I didn't have that sort of thought about me where I'm like, I can play this and like spend the time on it and whatever, no, and push okay. through it. Yeah. Because the the story of the first one, I loved it. Mm. It was fantastic. It was a fantastic game. But the second one, um, it didn't grip me immediately. Even though, like, I tried to throw like a familiar character in my face in a deer to like near the beginning and all that stuff but I was kind of just like eh I don't think I'm as interested in this I, I, maybe because I liked uh, Tiz and Agnes more as characters uh, in the first one whereas this one had um, a different pro- a different protagonist and then his and then his two friends to like sort of start the story off and I didn't really get okay. around them so it seems like the second one is based it's like Final Fantasy the next the second game is like a completely different world, completely different story. Yeah. Everything, so. Yeah. So, um, brave, you, you've got Bravely Default and Bravely Second and those were one sub one yeah. set of games. There's a continuation from the, next, uh, from the first one. And then, I guess, people got confused and I saw a lot of comments on Twitter where they're just like, oh, it's, just, it's the third game but it's named Bravely Default 2. Okay. It's like, oh, because the first two of the set of games... A set of games together it's a sequel and a sequel like Final Fantasy 13 1 and 2 um, and then Bravely Seconds the second world mm. you got to put on, on your uh, Square Enix hat to sort of work yeah, out you what, do. They, what they mean <laughs> yeah you do but I'm so excited for that game because it um, the Bravely default system changes up uh, changes up how the game really can be played as a, as a turn based RPG um, much like how uh, with Persona they had they have like the guns and all that stuff in P5 or uh, whatever it may be and uh, sort of elements sort of lending to it and then uh, you hold up at the end of each battle in Persona 5 um, in, in a similar way the way Bravely and Default sort of plays into it is you can be defensive for a couple turns if you want and you could save yourself some time but by being defensive you can extra attack attack and then you sort of push forward and mm. hit more so it was sort of a good way of like mixing up the combat to be like hey you should probably be default for this hit and take it and take half the damage because you could still strike twice the next turn um but if you choose not to you're probably going to get one hit KO by this attack so it varied up like really well um, how guard mechanics work I guess yeah but I quite like that too the they're not they're, yeah they're not mm. just useless like guard mechanics in RPGs traditionally have been like oh you took a hit and then it did nothing sort yeah. of thing um, but now like in Bravely Default it did something and it changes so many things I guess and it's got a lot of uh, traditional Final Fantasy class uh, classes and all that stuff and I guess just Bravely Default 2 uh, for me 
the reason it ticks ticks all my boxes so much is that I tried to um, really get into Octopath Traveler and it's one of those games where I put, you know, 20, 25 hours in and I couldn't get latched. I've mm. still got it and I, and I still intend to play the rest of it, but it didn't, it didn't latch me like a lot of RPGs do. So I was kind of just like, okay, well, I'll put it down for a bit and I haven't picked it back up and I really want to play through the rest of it, but I haven't. Um, but Bravely Default, I'd never really had a trouble with it. I kind of just kept going and it was just a, sort of the second one that sort of stuffed me around a bit. But I'm hoping with a new set of characters in a new world will sort of refresh it for me. Mm. So I'm really excited to see it. Yeah. I really loved like the art and everything as well. Like yeah. with the first one that game came out, I'm like, holy crap, like just the box art for it. Oh, beautiful. I'm like, oh, what a pretty looking game. Like once you actually get it on 3DS, like the models didn't look so good, but the backgrounds were just like still beautiful, even on 3DS. Yeah. Yeah. Even Bravely Second. Did you see Bravely Second Second's box art? Yeah. Like, yeah. I fucking love that box art. Um, It's like, uh, I think it was a deer in front of the moon. Yeah, so it's like, it's going to be one of those games, if I get it digitally, it's going to be like a bit of a shame not to have the box for like a game like that. Like, yeah, it's like that's really right, nice looking. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I mean... <laughs> I guess I'm. I guess I'm just glad. Like, oh my god, look at that! It's an awesome box art. Love Should that. Box yeah, art. I love it too. So good. Probably second end layer. Mm. Uh, mm. It's just a shame it never really caught me. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Besides that, so I think that's all the announcements on the Switch side of things. Um, before we go into sort of the last bit of the show, I want to talk about the sort of uh, Reggie's appearance at the Game Awards. Yeah. So this uh, they actually uh, announced um, on the Game Awards Twitter that. No, Reggie would be a, a presenter at the Game Awards just as, after we finished recording last week's episode. Yeah. <laughs> would have been good to bring up on our sort of uh, predictions episode. But um, once they, that was sort of known, I'm like, oh, I'm a, I was more excited to see Reggie, you know, do public speaking at a gaming event again. We've seen Reggie, like, you know, do public speaking about, like, business and everything. And, and it's very interesting, but having him back sort of, you know, at the celebration of video games, like, oh, this is going to be exciting. And having him announce the... Uh, the, the uh, award for the the best indie game um sort of the speech you did about you know everyone's an indie developer when they first start off you know whether it's a wada or uh, miyamoto whoever it is like you know they had their ideas and look at where they are now sort of it would have if i was a, a developer it would have been so inspiring to me and even just as a gamer it was just so nice to sort of hear it yeah and as he did it he just like he just um he, he always carries himself so well he does doesn't he yeah, yeah. He, he, I mean he even talked about a water and he said he, he he said the first game he programmed was on a TI calculator you know mm. and he was just sort of like he, he's always he's always got that information in the back of your head that'll know will hit the audience with like a oh and he's really dedicated to keeping like a lot of a memories alive in that respect yeah and it's interesting too like he's at a gaming event but he's not there to He's not Nintendo anymore. He's his own entity. You know, he doesn't. That, he's he can say what he wants. He can do what he wants. So it's interesting. You know, not having, um, I guess, the shackles on. Yeah. <laughs> talk yeah. about it. And sort of after the event happened, um, um, someone from the Hollywood Reporter caught up with him, and they got this quote from him about sort of cloud gaming and sort of what he thinks of like the future of gaming. So he says, as the technology evolves to the to be a cloud. Um, and as download speeds increase, uh, what it means is you're able to able to play any game on any device. Uh, and he added that, of course, games sh- uh, shouldn't expect that in the near term future. Um, it will happen over the next decade, and will be something that's really meaningful to players. So, you know, he's obviously got opinions that cloud gaming is going to be really big. Um, but you know, if he was still at Nintendo, he wouldn't have said any of that because Nintendo is not involved. In cloud gaming whatsoever at the moment so it is interesting when well they are well not like google stadia or x cloud or whatever though well, they had resident evil 7 and they had assassin's creed yeah well in japan and that was sort of that was by ubisoft and by capcom that wasn't yeah but that's still got to be in correlation with them somehow they need to actually have the technology on the system to do it yeah i guess yeah I think the problem is uh, with cloud gaming is that he says it's going to be you know within the next decade or so you know I I don't think that's the case I think the thing is is that for that service to be an actual workable thing literally the entire world needs to go under a change of like how the internet operates uh, and who has access to that speed 
Um, because if they were to make an entirely based cl- a cloud-based gaming system, which, aha, Google Stadia, uh, it's not going to work, especially for people like us who live in the middle of the country in nowhere. Um, we don't get the internet speed for that type of thing. It's not reliable enough. Internet goes down all the time. That's really annoying. You just can't play your games. Mm. Uh, we already have that problem with... Um, uh, what's the term? Online games. Uh, always online. No, I guess always online, but there is an actual like acronym for it. Uh, DRM. Yeah. Um, like you go offline, and if you've been playing a game that, uh, like, say, Monster Hunter or something, you want to play that offline, you can't. <laughs> bump bump. You know, you can't do it. Mm. It's impossible. So that's kind of like well. That's infuriating, and if you're going to rely on something like Google Stadia to sort of keep playing or whatever, and then all of a sudden it's like, uh, pain in the ass. Yeah, and that 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 is not going to evolve for a long time. Maybe in America or something like that, a system will sort of become available. But as far as actual hardware goes, uh, if major gaming companies want to keep the same sort of business that they've currently got going, they need to keep up mm. that, you know, the technology yeah the hardware yeah, yeah. i guess yeah, yeah it's probably the best word for it mm. at the moment it's too, too impossible yeah as a bit of a segue i do like how xbox is sort of using the x cloud so a lot of interviews like phil spencer have said like this isn't replacing gaming this isn't replacing our hardware this is just an additive to our ecosystem so um if you buy an Xbox, you can you know buy Borderlands three. But if you're away from your house, you can just boot up your phone, play it there. Yeah. If your internet's good enough, I like it like that. But how Google Stadia is sort of using it as like it's all in the cloud. You don't have to do any downloads or anything. But when you get home, like you know, one download isn't that bad <laughs> for your game. Yeah. And you just got it, and it works, and it's just you know 4K working well. But when you get home, and you're just trying to stream it. You know, most it wouldn't be ideal for most people. Yeah, it's not ready for it yet. No. So I sort of want to talk about sort of um, at the Game Awards, the Xbox Series X was announced. So out of nowhere, mind you, I did. I was actually pretty. I was actually pretty shocked. This was probably my favorite announcement from uh, the event itself because it's you know the biggest one, the most exciting one. Refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah. And like, regardless, like. Um, I actually quite like the look of the console. Like, so do I. I reckon it looks really nice. Yeah. My only my only concern was like, oh, that's actually a bit thick. How am I going to fit it in the in my under my TV? I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, it'll it'll still fit. It'll be tight. You'll figure it out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll figure it out. But like a lot of people saying, like, if the, if you're actually complaining, like, oh, it's so big, it's like, oh, it's it's fine. All I want is a box that can run my games really well. Yeah. When I'm buying a PlayStation or an Xbox, I don't want it being a bit smaller just for the sake of being smaller. If it's got to be a nice hefty thing to run my games well and not blow up because of overheating yeah it is what it is and that's what they decided to make so that's I'm, good I'm confident this game being a day, uh, th- this game console rather being a day one pickup for me uh, simply b- for what Microsoft the thing is is like the one's gone under a lot of problems thanks to Don Matrick and everything he tried to sort of mm. lay in place before the console even come out but then Phil Spencer sort of coming in is trying to fix up but what I think Phil Spencer has been trying to do with the Xbox One is trying to set up an ecosystem that will catch everybody next generation because he knew that the damage was already done this one mm. and it already shows because of what happened like the Switch is outselling uh, the Xbox One and all that stuff but I think his entire his entire purpose for the rest of the Xbox One generation was I'm going to set up something really big so that when the next console comes out it's going to be really hard to pass it up mm. so I mean we've been getting with with the Xbox when you buy gold you get the same deal as PlayStation Plus you get your free games and all that stuff but then you know you've got the X Cloud uh, as a thing and then you've got the Game Pass uh, being an integrated system with Windows PCs now, um, and then you know you've got uh, the Xbox, the Xbox controller being so universally good across both PC and Xbox. It's mm-hmm. like just an easy connect and play. I think like he's they're trying to really build this ecosystem so that when this next console comes out, the X, the Xbox Series X, when it comes out it'll just easily fit into all of that and if you're already an Xbox owner it's like just whoop, change over <laughs> yeah seamless and it's just yeah. absolutely incredible and I think like that that in itself is like yes 
Mm. I'm going to have like a library of over 150 games just to play on day one just with Game Pass alone, let alone everything that I've already got in my previous library that I've bought on my previous Xbox consoles. Mm. So I'll be like, yay. Yeah, well, it's it's like, um, it's the same reason I really became a big PlayStation fan back when it was PS3, PS Vita. Uh, when I got my Vita... Um, I bought you know, plenty of games online and those games were cross buy across PS Vita and PS3 so and like Xbox 360 back then I didn't I didn't I knew I knew it was better than the PS3 just as far as you know Xbox Live and all that but um, as far as like games I wanted to play they were on PlayStation so I was quite happy to swap over the PS3 and I was really happy I did really enjoyed the ecosystem between Vita and PS3 whether it was trophies cross buy and all that but and then into the PS4 generation, you know, there's heaps of heaps of exclusives I really, 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 really liked. But as the PS Vita sort of dropped, and it was, it's sort of like it took that bit away from the ecosystem of like all the online stuff that I really liked. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Xbox is building theirs up, but PlayStation's been losing theirs since the Vita's dropped. Yeah. So like just with the PS4 and then with the Switch coming out and sort of taking over what the Vita and 3DS did for me back in, you know, 2013, I'm like, ugh. And sort of as well, like the exclusives, I know they've just gotten better, but I've sort of become less interested in them. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I know they've gotten better, like with, you know, God of War Horizon. Like you can't, I can't really fault the games, but at the same time, they haven't really interested me all that much. Yeah. So, right. and with like Xbox having... Like get, having Game Pass and all this, um, you just want something meaty to play your big AAA titles on that aren't necessarily locked to exclusives. Yeah, and yeah. like even with all the acquisitions and all that Microsoft Game Studios have done, um, leading up to this as well, and there's like you know with Senua's Sacrifice and or Hellblade Two, sorry, um, like and Rare's next game and all that, it's it's actually looking pretty promising on the exclusive side as well as. You know, Game Pass where you get you get them all for free with that subscription and all those studios ac- studio acquisitions too. It's just sort of just like yeah. looking at all the studios they acquired. What was it last year? Mm. Like holy crap! Imagine all the games that they've got going in for. It. Yeah. So sort of at this stage, I'm sort of I'm sort of open. I'm going to get one of them at launch, whether it's the Xbox or the PlayStation Five. Um, and I'm just going to have I'm just going to be open minded. I'm going to see if PlayStation sort of win me back because I'm really considering the Xbox at the moment. Just for the fact it's be like, you know, great hardware, Game Pass, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> I, I think I've said it enough when I've said that I, PlayStation really need to pick up the game if they're going to uh, appease to, you know, people like you or me um, that really don't give a shit as long as they've got one. Because hmm. the, the, there's exclusives on PlayStation that I definitely love playing, like Persona and all that, but, you know, we're getting the Royal next year on PlayStation 4 I'll probably play that and then Final Fantasy 7 I'll probably play that on PlayStation as well because obviously it's there it's your exclusive over there yeah yeah that's literally it though um, past that it's like when a new generation of console comes out what's really going to grip me hmm. um, that, there's actually heaps on PlayStation next year I'm like oh yeah I've, I've got to play that like Last of Us 2 Ghost of Tsushima like I'm like alright those those are games that are marked on my calendar which I've got to play especially Last of Us yeah. So I really enjoyed the first one, but yeah. But it'll um, be on PlayStation Four. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've already got that. So I've got two of them. <laughs> so PS PS Five. It's just like they really need to sort yeah. of bring out the big guns, otherwise they're gonna fall. And like, it's, I don't think it's even games with PS Five that they need to win me over with. They need to sort of step up their services. They do to match <laughs> Xboxes because they can come out with Horizon Two and like these. They can come out with phenomenal games. We saw what was the uh, what was the PS Five game was announced Game Awards Gods. Oh, anyway, it was a. It was a um, action, loot, yeah, no, yeah. A- action loot game looks really cool looked yeah, like fun did, yeah. Um, but yeah it, like, they can have as many of those awesome looking games as it is but you know I want because what Game Pass sort of offers me is like I can sit down one night and go oh I feel like um, just exploring you go to Game Pass you go to Action Adventure oh cool download that never heard of that in my life play it yeah. earn some achievements just muck around it. And you don't have to play it ever again or you might play it for the rest of the week yeah. but it just gives you that flexibility yeah, that's right. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, it doesn't dedicate you into like just absolutely going. Hey, I need to buy this game, and then try it, and then go. Oh, I wasn't really fucking interested in that. And then was I? Yeah. So on. I'm really excited for the next generation next year. Next year is going to be an absolutely huge year for gaming. Um, but and all of this wasn't just to talk about Xbox and PlayStation. I want to bring it back to Nintendo because next year is going to be 
all about these new games, these new consoles, and Switch is going to be still trucking along doing what it's doing. But what do you think this year's or next year is going to do for the Switch? Do you reckon it's going to be a tough year for the Switch? Do you reckon the Switch is going to keep going strong and hold up against these next machines? Because these next machines, like we know what they're going to be. They're going to be very powerful PC-esque machines. They're going to have their set of exclusives on them. And, you know, the controllers are going to be a little bit different for each one. You know, the, the PlayStation 5 is going to lack a light bar and have a, a bit of a different shape and the Xbox... Uh, Series X control is going to be very similar except for a little bit different shape and a share button. Um, so we pretty much know what they're going to be. Just It's yeah. the services and these other things what we need to find out about. I think the thing with Nintendo is and I think it's been their MO for the couple, last couple of years that the Switch has been out is that they've realised thanks to the Wii U and you know the 3DS is a really shitty library launch as well. I liked Pilot Wings. I know it was just taken from Wii Sports Resort but it was fun it was one game yeah I, I am joking That it's not a great game I enjoyed it though <laughs> um, but it's sort of like what they've realised is that hitting hitting hard and especially with the Switch it just shows hitting hard every year is what's going to keep them in the game mm. it's not even so much about the hardware for them everybody sort of at this point expects Nintendo hardware to not match uh, the other two so they've, what they've got to do is they've got to use their proprietary software to deliver good games and you know you've got Breath of the Wild 2 on the horizon and I think that's definitely slated for next year I think that's why they revealed it they need something to compete this year Zelda's going to compete for that um, we'll have to see a new Mario title probably uh, I don't know whether it'll be on the veins of like Mario Odyssey 2 or something new or whatever it may be but um, it's it's going to have to be a big year of like absolute slam titles again probably mm. I mean we've had a, we've had good years all the way up until now I don't see why they can't do it again they've obviously seen that like the power that they've that they've got under this system they've got a lot of money coming back into the company because the system's such a good seller and then like a lot of the games are being picked up and, you know there's games reaching up 15 million copies even further it just shows that software is what gets people in for them it's not so much the hardware because if these if if this little console in my hand right here, yeah, oh, that that one was the power of an Xbox One or a PS4. I think people would be fucking flabbergasted and they wondered why the fuck, why the fuck, why the fuck are they using giant fucking boxes connected to their TV when they could just use something like that and that connects the TV whenever they want. It's very obvious that you know as good as this thing is and as powerful as this thing can be, that it's still not quite up to like. PS4 Xbox standards to the T I think like it's pretty close but not that close yeah yeah it's about halfway between probably PS3 and PS4 probably yeah probably yeah close to the PS3 maybe maybe yeah. maybe depending on what game and what developers sort of trying to utilise it that's right and it's NVIDIA architecture so it's really good to sort of I was even talking about that to Stuart the other night and he bought a NVIDIA shield for his TV and we're talking about NVIDIA tech. You put in the NVIDIA Shield. Yeah. What for Netflix and stuff, or for games? Uh, for a bit of everything. Yeah. Huh. He um he imported one from America, the new Shield, eight huh. eight K eight K capable and all that shit. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, beside all that, um, it's 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 pretty obvious that they could sell systems very easily without matching the current competitors. Uh, as long as they keep making great games, and look look what's happened, like. It, it's worked really well it's obviously good hardware and like games don't always sell their systems because it certainly didn't sell the Wii U but when you've got a system that works like the Switch or even the Wii back in the day um, as long as you've got a system that works and you sell games that cater to that hardware very well they'll be fine so Zelda a new Mario title of some kind whether we get another Pokemon game next year um I feel like there'll be a couple spin-off titles in there somewhere. We've obviously got Animal Crossing, uh, which will do a lot. <laughs> um, spin-off titles may include something like a like another sports sports game for Mario, whether it may be. Um, Let's do Strikers. I want them to do Strikers. I want next level games to do Strikers really bad. Um, and then we might see. 
some of the obscure things like maybe Bayonetta 3 might uh, might get announced for next year uh, I would love to see something like Donkey Kong Country or a Donkey Kong game of some kind make a return <laughs> did you do that on purpose? what? I want to see a Donkey Kong Country game make a return I didn't <laughs> <laughs> shit <laughs> There's a game for that. It's called Donkey Kong Country Returns. Shut up. You know what I mean. <laughs> a Donkey Kong. Re- well, it sounds weird if I say oh, I want Donkey Country. Donkey Kong Country Returns to return. It sounds <laughs> weird. Okay. Anyway, um, I want. Uh, it would be nice to see something like that, especially considering how tr- how well Tropical Freeze is sort of done in the eyes of the community. Uh, and then I'm hoping that we get more Xbox titles shipped over. That'd be nice considering how buddy buddy they are mm. yeah like i i don't i see like a i see like a lot of the articles and that being sort of focused on next generation consoles and nintendo not getting the limelight because like since we started this podcast back in 2017 nintendo has pretty much had a lot of the limelight sh- shine on it oh yeah because like obviously 20 2017 it was all about zelda mario it was it was pretty much those two games fighting each other at the Game Awards. It was all about Nintendo that year. Nintendo made a huge return from the Wii U to the Switch. It was just... It couldn't have gone any better for them. Yeah. Um, 2018, another year, just all pretty much about Nintendo. All the lead-up to Smash Bros, all the marketing. Uh, then this year, obviously, hit after hit. There was one nearly every month. So 2020 is pretty much the first year that we're going to be looking at you know, PlayStation, Xbox, like we're really like trying to hype themselves up. Yeah. Um, and they will. Yeah. I see that there's a, I see like Colin Moriarty, he puts like a, he's been, he put up a tweet like a, f- I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or whatever. He said, oh, you know, once the next generation of consoles comes out, like, you no, know, Switch is going to be in trouble because it's going to be harder to port games to it. But I'm sort of like, all Shut the-, the fuck up, Colin. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Because like, sorry, mate. That's <laughs> all, a shit opinion. It it is a shit opinion. Um, in in my opinion. Um, but it, yeah, Nintendo's never been. Yeah, again. because like, apart from like a couple of Bethesda games and whatever, like the Switch isn't thriving on those games anyway. It is not. People aren't buying them for those games. They're buying them for third party games, but they're not buying them for the games that you'd be playing on your PS4 Pro or no. your Xbox One X. No. So it's kind of like they're not going to hurt in that aspect they're not going to be like oh there's no games on the Switch now because the next generation's out I don't think we're going to see if I reckon the Beth- places like Bethesda are going to be like oh it's a bit harder now so it's not not all of our games are going to be coming to it but we are going to go back to say Dishonored or something that's a bit easier we'll try to keep supporting it with stuff like that but you're not going to see Wolfenstein 3 which is a launch title for say Xbox Series X which is also ported to the Switch because you know it's a it's a lot more of a stretch to sort of make that happen. See, I feel like I feel like any time I hear about Colin and Nintendo, and whenever you bring him up, he's always shitting on them. Like he's mm. got some sort of pension against them, and that fucking annoys the shit out of me. Like absolutely annoys the shit out of me. Yeah, like I I, I quite enjoy like his um his podcast, but yeah, I don't listen to him when he talks about Nintendo. It's kind of like. Because like, he drones on, he just wants to see them die. It's not going to happen. No, I sorry. Don't, no, I don't. I don't think it's that. He's just um, he was ja- he was like you know hurt or jaded by the Wii, and he sort of hadn't let go of that. Even though the jaded sort of by the Wii. you know, because it was just like lots of shit coming out on it. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Anyway, who cares? Who cares? Uh, <laughs> fucking hell. But yeah, I just brought that app as an example. Like, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Get over it, Colin. I don't think that's going to be an issue. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> Um, for them so yeah I don't yeah so whether it's just going to be just through software or it's going to be gonna, it's not going to fucking matter it's not they're, they're not going to be affected by by that at all <laughs> I've really I've stung your butt haven't I bringing that up oh uh, just man it's, I will never understand it <laughs> never so do you reckon it. we'll see like a PS oh, not PS4 Pro do you reckon we'll see a Switch Pro or like a model I would fucking love to see it to be honest but I don't think it'll happen mm. um, my problem with the, with the Switch Pro it's obvious these Pro consoles work uh, but I feel like with the new model come out uh, you know obviously the, the better battery life and all that stuff um, I feel like they're kind of at the moment just sort of in this limbo of like we want people to buy the Switch Lite and then you know, there's a new model out with a better battery, which maybe people sink, sink their teeth into. I do want a pro console, though. Yeah, and I, I hope one. and I hope it gets announced next year because um, 
<laughs> You're looking at your cracked switch here. I'm just looking at looking at my old boy in general. I've, I've put a lot of hours into this thing, Drew. A lot, of, a lot of hours into it. It's good memories, but good um, memories. Yeah. Yeah, still no broken Joy-Con. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I, I kind of just, I kind of want, um, I kind of want a more premium console. I guess. Mm. Something with a bit more oomph in it. Um, and I know I'd be right on it next year. I'd, I'd absolutely buy it. I feel like it'd be the, the sweetest time to buy it. I'd probably end up with two consoles that year, and that would probably be the Series X and this. Um, and yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking about, like, I've been thinking a lot about sort of like, you know, things to improve the podcast and like just the podcast in general for twenty twenty. I was thinking like it'd be interesting to see like you know even our numbers for this little Nintendo podcast we do just as far as like all the hype leading up to the other consoles and how, how like people are still like obviously we'll have like you know still like hardcore Nintendo fans but yeah see, see how it all peters out interested to see how, how the year goes yeah for sure regardless I'm excited just for Nintendo games PlayStation Xbox so they bring to the table me too it's going to be a big year yeah yeah. Can I'm, I- I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see it all as well uh, it's um definitely always in, it, it's it's always interesting when a new set of, uh, set of the major two I guess come out with the all the sort of third party yeah. um, third party support yeah. and all Nintendo that shit. just comes out like hey guys we're here but when they come out they come out at like the exact same time because going, it's a competition and they're going for the same audience yeah, <laughs> and it's right. like it's like you know they are competing where Nintendo's like oh we don't worry about the other ones we're Blue Ocean we've, yeah we've literally got our own audience we don't have to worry about it yeah, that's Nintendo's never like we always talk about the big three, uh, and everybody always talks about the big three like it's some big competition between between three big companies. But realistically, it's competing two competing companies and one that's just sort of chilling in the back with their thumbs like this, like yeah, doing the waka, what's up, waka brother? waka, yeah, bye, yeah, and then they just sit there and thrive, thrive off their own material. They don't have to worry about anybody anybody coming exclusively to their console would early access DLC or exclusive DLC or any shit like that Nintendo just sort of just do their own thing and they mm. succeed I like that I like uh, that's why Nintendo's great <laughs> I appreciate how jarring it is when you like go to the eShop and you see like new NBA games come out it's $150 Ugh. it's got like the premium currency bundled in with it you're like you just don't see that no not on, on Switch. Nintendo not well, on Nintendo but yeah. you go on like the PlayStation store it's just like all you of just the expect sports. it yeah it's just it's just there yeah you just so expect it it, it is in some respects I guess like those uh, publishers not supporting it is kind of like a bit of fresh air <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like oh I hope I hope Nintendo never falls in that category of just like we'll pollute our store with microtransactions and they just pollute it with like really ordinary indie games yeah but they're indie games and you're still supporting people and that's good yeah you know you're not supporting giant companies that just want your money for money's sake you're, you're just supporting little people that want your money for money's sake well they want your money to make more games you know, they don't want your money to just have money. I just, I just want to clarify. I'm not saying indie games are bad. I'm just saying, you know, the shovelware stuff. There is shovelware that yeah. you see on the shop. It shouldn't be there. <laughs> but that's a that's pretty a sure we all think that. But yeah, it's, it's a topic for another day. That's right. I think uh, I think we've covered this topic enough for us, and that brings us to the end of the show. How do you feel about that? Good. That's good. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. It's so late. <laughs> it is. It is getting late. It's uh, 10:30. Jesus. PM. Shit. Um. Just. Uh, take everyone behind the curtain here at the house of Mario uh, that's why like halfway through I've become like yeah, you know my voice gets a bit more like uh, 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 uh. so Bryce next week is going to be our last episode for 2019 and we're going to be talking about Nintendo over the last decade so from 2009 to 2019 yep um, there's a lot what's happened in there so I'm keen to sort of you know dig into that and I want to uh, I want to put out the call. Uh, so if you listen to this on the Tuesday, um, this episode gets released. Uh, you've got two days, so we'll be recording uh, Wednesday night on the same week. So if you have any favorite games from the last decade, whether it's memories or anything like that, let us know, and uh, we'll include you in the show. It's That's gonna, right. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty good one, I reckon. Yeah, it should be fun. Um, it's going to be another late recording, so hopefully get up the energy for it. Uh, it's also going to be the night I'm going to watch Star Wars because that's the midnight. <laughs> Is it? For that, yeah. Oh, shit. Have fun. Yeah. So, like, I don't really want... I can't really be bothered going at midnight. But at the same time, I've done it for the other two movies. So, I might as well just round out the trilogy. 
That's how, that's how I feel. Um, uh, hopefully you'll make it. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully I'll make it. Anyway, it's not, it's not important for this uh, conversation, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let us know in the Discord or uh, Twitter. And uh, yeah. So everyone, thank you very much for listening to The House of Mari, episode 126. Uh, if you'd like to tell Bryce about your favorite game of the decade, where can they find you on Twitter? And IV Revan. Also, tell us uh, who won that pizza. Yeah, that'd be now good. I'm hungry. That'd be good. If, any, <laughs> if anyone just like listened to the last episode, maybe to catch up or something recently, and you do remember, let us know. Um, because I don't mind buying a pizza. Bryce doesn't mind uh, eating a pizza. That's right. Uh, vice versa. I think that's a... Yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty standard by now. It's pretty yeah. pretty standard. Uh, yeah. We've got a nice little pizza joint local, Gino's. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll yeah. sit down and eat a pizza and yeah, he could pay for it. Yeah, well, well, you might have to pay for it, yeah, too, mate. What what flavor will you will you want? Oh, creamy garlic chicken. Oh, that is really good there, isn't it? It's a fucking really good pizza. Oh, yeah, so good. And we could sit down and play Smash Brothers with greasy fingers. Thing, yeah. yeah, and uh, if uh, Bryce failed to win this bet, you can tweet me at <laughs> iDrewby. <laughs> and if you want to contact the show, the show is at the House of Mario. And uh, yeah, there's a patreon.com slash iDrewby if you'd like to support the show more, get early access and all of that fun stuff, whatever whatever it is. Um, encore yes House Mario Encore yeah. where where you talked about uh, mobile games you ranked your favourite mobile games I I, I uh, ranked all of Nintendo's Nintendo slash Nintendo related offerings so Pokemon there's there's just as many Pokemon games as there is in, uh, Nintendo games mm. on mobile so I ranked them all in a tier list um, in terms of what's worth your time and uh, what's light on the wallet so there you go yeah go check yeah. it out I'll, decent list yeah I listened through it it was a good listen there you go you said you were sick at it um, but you weren't that sick you sounded alright you, you sounded a bit quiet because it was uh, late at night you recorded it yeah yeah. Uh, I felt sick yeah, yeah. Uh, throat uh, I was holding my throat the entire time because I'm like feeling that itch and I'm like I don't want to cough every two seconds I'm like yeah guys <laughs> yeah well fair enough yeah. anyway guys uh, this week's Nintendo jukebox is an actual chain uh, uh, epic metal cover <laughs> of uh, the task force and it's by a little v mills you might have seen him around youtube soundcloud and all that just yeah. great great uh, guitar covers of video game music wicked and until next week w- which will be our final episode have a merry christmas and we'll see you next week well yeah this episode should be out christmas eve or day christmas day christmas day yeah so uh ho, we'll, ho, ho. we'll give you a merry christmas then too we will and a happy new year then too yeah, yeah. all right bye Oh! <laughs>